I'm Alderman Marlene Davis. You are currently in the 19th Ward. You are currently about to experience the beginning of a wonderful journey. This journey started about two and a half years ago. I'm sure that the dream started long before that. But as we move forward in the next year, the reality will be there. In making sure that I say to you many times during this program, I welcome you to the 19th Ward. I welcome you to have your place of gathering, your community center here in the city of St. Louis boundaries. But most especially, I'm gonna say thank you again for choosing the 19th Ward. So now, I think we need to know a little bit more of the history, of how we got to this day. And I'd like to make sure that the person who started it and called me is telling you the correct information. So I would like to ask Muligati Tafari to come forward and give you remarks on behalf of the Red Sea Editorian Community Center. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Alderwoman Davis. Good morning. Well, first of all, after nearly three years of anticipation and speculation, the Red Sea Eritrean Community Center has reached this groundbreaking stage to the delight of all the Eritreans and Eritrean friends. We purchased this building three years ago in March of 2010, and we've been busy ever since. I think part of the, what kept us busy is we purchased the building and we were planning on having two phases of construction. But we end up, this land was not ours. So the first project we took was to purchase the first land. We obtained the parcel, this parcel of the land in the middle from the city of St. Louis, LRA. Then we purchased the rest of the land from a family of four, six, that were in dispute which took us a little time to really uh, close the deal. So that kept us busy besides looking for financial aid for, to finance the building to do it the right way. Right from the beginning, we decided if we're going to be part of the Grand Center, then this has to be done the right way. The right parking lot, the right inside, not just this uh, uh, cheap type of uh, buildings that we've seen in some areas. So we are very happy. This would not have happened without the support of many, many people. We're very grateful to a lot of people. Let me start by from the beginning. First of all, older woman Davis, Marlene Davis, support was very instrumental to this whole project. She's been with us from conception to completion. She's not done yet. <laughs> we are honored to be part of the 19th Ward. This is the best ward in the city of St. Louis. We've always decided that we wanted to have our community center in the city of St. Louis, because many of us, when we first came to this country, we landed in the city. So this is what we wanted to have as part of our foundation. So Alder Woman Davis, her vision and leadership has been exemplary, and we truly thank you for all that you've done. I'm going to acknowledge the people in the order of how we got involved with each group. The next group of people that were introduced are the SAG consultants, Mr. Ron Smith in the back, and also... Mr. Barry Adelston in the back. They have been on our side through thick and thin. The first thing Alder Woman Davis had asked us to do is, because of our lack of expertise, because we are all volunteers, none of us get salary or anything to run this organization. So because of all of that, we need some experts on our sides to help us, support us, to guide us on all the technical aspects. So she introduced us to the SAG consultants 
introduced us to the consultant and it's been great. They have done almost everything. They have been advising us, closing land deals, bidding, getting permits, and more. Their patience, technical expertise, and their humble attitude, more than anything, is greatly appreciated, and we thank you for it. Then we decided to have, this is a great part, great area of St. Louis. I, I know many of you know about Grand Center. To be accepted in the Grand Center is not an easy thing. You really have to have a plan. This is an arts and entertainment area with a great vision, a great potential, a great plan for the future. So the first thing we've decided to do is we need to develop partnership with Grand Center. Grand Center, Mr. Vince Shamo, former mayor of St. Louis, is the executive director. So we started talking to him. He came and visited the building, walked around, spent about an hour to really ask, what are you going to do with the building? So we've ex after we've explained to him, he embraced the diversity that we were bringing to this area. He fell in love with the whole idea. I'm all behind you. Let's move on. That was a great, great support for us to hear to begin with. So we want to thank you for that. So after we start putting deals together, the construction was beginning. We needed to legalize all of this. So we've attained the attorney help, Mr. Will Zorn. And also, partnership with JP, which I'll talk in a few minutes, their attorney, Mr. Shark, Mark Schulte. I want to thank them for their relentless work in putting the pieces of the puzzle together. This meant for us, the knowledge of law they gave us, gave us a peace of mind. We didn't have, we didn't have to guess. We didn't have to worry about any liability because they were looking at all the right things to do. Because from scratch, we wanted to do this properly. We don't want to mess up anywhere. So their guidance has been very important to putting the piece of the puzzle together in all of this. Most importantly, we don't want this building to sit here while we're raising funds. The Eritrean community is determined to do whatever it takes to have our center. But Instead of sitting and waiting, we decided that let's get financial help so this building can generate its own revenue as we go along. Three years wasted would mean three years loss of revenue. So we decided to have some discussions after several trials. We end up with Justine Peterson, the organization that's right next door, and the executive director, Mr. Robert Boyle. We wanted to thank Mr. Boyle for taking us on his side as a good neighbor, sponsoring us, and for taking full financial burden on our behalf. So we decided to take the loan, get this place done the right way, and move on from there to pay for it in the next three years so we can give them their freedom. So a special thanks goes to Mr. Robert Will, and also the staff of Justine Peterson, which we will be visiting next door in a few minutes for our reception. And the staff that organized this, part of it, part of the reception part is also, many of his staff have been working with us, so we want to thank them for all of their help. Now, to all the Eritreans, Although we're grateful to all these people that have been supporting us, that have been guiding us, and bringing, bringing us under their wings, the responsibility falls under us. This is our building, and it's our responsibility to carry out the plan. And I think your presence today, many of you, I know many people are working, but your presence today is an affirmation that the building 
will be paid as planned in three years. And I want to thank you for your vision. <laughs> Lastly, I know we have a lot to talk about, but it's hot, it's sunny. I wanted to thank Congressman Clay's office for sending us a representative today, Mr. Bolte. And I also want to thank the mayor's office, Sable Jones, representative of Mayor Slay, thanking us here. With that, I know we can have more chatting to do in the reception area. I will turn it over to Alderwoman Davis and we'll have more discussion at the grand opening, which construction should begin in a few months. Thank you very much. I'm going to say thank you again. You are going to be residents of the 19th Ward with your community center. Because it's not just a community center. You'll become a part of a neighborhood, a community. I wanted to also recognize another new resident to the 19th Ward. Alex is one of the owners of the Metropolitan Cab Company. And they recently bought a building in the 19th Ward a couple of blocks from here. They're renovating the building, moving their business over here. Thank you, Alex. You know they have the cleanest cabs in the state of Missouri. I've never seen one of their cabs look bad on the street. So I appreciate that good service. On behalf of Mayor Slay, I'd like to bring to you Sable Jones. Good morning and welcome. And I always like to start anything by asking my elders, please, is it okay if I speak to you? Thank you. Uh, good morning. Again, my name is Sable Campbell Jones, and um, I am the Director of Diversity and Inclusion for the City of St. Louis. <clears throat> and on behalf of Mayor Slay, again, I welcome you. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and, um, I just want to say a little, a uh, few things about the 19th Ward, Alderman Davis. I grew up right uh, down the street in what was called the Blue Meyer Housing, uh, it was Blue Meyer Village Housing Project when I was young and it was um, just being built. And that was a place, it, it was actually a village of where all families grew and was raised. <clears throat> and I'm sure that Ms. Paulette can attest to that. Um, the other thing is, today what is happening, um, Mulu, if I might, uh, I know that anything he puts his hands on is going to be great. And so much of the Eritrean community, um, I have many, many friends that I went to St. Louis University with who are now my best friends for life. And so I know how well that you do things. A part of what my job is, is <clears throat> I'm working a lot with, um, I'm going to be working with Ann Croslin and the International Institute, which is also down on South Grand, and immigration. And exactly what is going, what today is doing, I'm, I'm sorry, what's going on today is exactly a lot of uh, what we talk about in terms of immigration and bringing other cultures to the city of St. Louis because your entrepreneurship is what helps the economy grow. So um, I know it's going to be great. Again, I welcome you all and uh, thank you. So you'll know when you move in that you have a neighbor who has been at the forefront of this immediate area and took a leadership role some years ago. So Paulette Crowley is your black captain through the Urban League. And you know she gets tired of me telling her stuff and dragging her places, but you know what? She's got it up here, she can help you, okay. Um, next, I'd like to bring up a gentleman, and you know, he's got his own history, but what a lot of people don't know about him is the real person, 
Because, you know, that political image that's put out there for you is not always the real person. And so it's been a pleasure for me to work here in this ward and have the leadership of Vince Shamel with Grand Center. Thank you, Vince, and come forward. Marlene, thank you, and uh, I want to thank you for getting us involved in this. I must say the day the car went through the side of the building, I wasn't so sure I wanted to be involved that day. But this is a, uh, a project that has been long in the making. I want to thank Rob Boyle for stepping up the way they did. Justine Peterson did a remarkable job here in sort of pulling together the, the components of a really great idea and making it uh, a financeable project. Uh, uh, this is really going to be, I think, a cornerstone uh, in the Grand Center neighborhood as we begin to try to build out a more robust immigration uh, and uh, uh, immigrant artist community in, in Grand Center. This is something that we've only had preliminary conversations uh, with uh, Marlene Davis about, but the idea of somehow making Grand Center a place where we are recognized as a welcoming international uh, artist community uh, it's something that we're beginning to, to figure out how do, we, how do we position ourselves to be recognized as that place for international artists who want to come to St. Louis. I'm working with Anna Croslin on the Mosaic Project, uh, and uh, I think there's some really promising work being done by this entire community on the issue of immigration and recognizing the value that immigrants bring uh, to, to our community. So I want to thank you for the opportunity to be here today, and I want to most of all thank you for being an anchor here in Grand Center. Thanks so much. So I'm going to say thank you again on behalf of the 9th District Police Scene. I see that my captain sent representation and he always does that. You all need to know that you are in the lowest crime area in the city of St. Louis, this ninth policing district. They do a great job. They're community minded. They understand that they need to know people. They understand that they have to go beyond all things that they know with intervention and prevention. And so I, I really applaud them. I could never do their job. My temperament is not right. You know, it just wouldn't work. So I appreciate them, and I thank our captain for sending representation. So next I'd like to have come before us now to represent his organization. And I'm now telling my age, because I was at the table when they were forming Justine Peterson's organization. I've been around a long time, been a part of a lot of things. And this organization has gone leaps and bounds from what we originally talked about. We started talking about just helping people, you know, with some little loans, yeah. understanding the housing situation and how to get into affordable, decent housing. And now look what we have. It is a model for the country. So Robert Boyle, please come before and represent Justine Peterson. Thank you, Marlene. Can, every, can you hear me all right? All right, good. I want to I, I, I want to thank uh, uh, everyone here. This is a, a testament to what we are attempting to do, what the mayor's office is attempting to do, what Congressman Clay's office is attempting to do, what uh, Mayor Shamel is attempting to do, and that's bring the community together. And I'm honored that the Eritrean community has thought fit to become our neighbor. It was back in the mid-80s, mid-1980s, when I first befriended the Eritrean community, uh, thanks to my good friend Mark Schulte. Uh, Mark introduced me to my good friend McConan Ogby, and McConan is a principal member and a board member of the Red Sea Community Group. And it took, it took, it took just a few minutes for me to understand that I wasn't just a friend, to McConan and his family, but I was a family member. So when I realized that the Eritrean community was going to be our neighbor, 
and when furthermore I realized that we had an opportunity to assist the community in financing its development, I realized that we really can't go through the typical underwriting activity. Uh, there are these five C's that we talk about when we lend to somebody. I didn't really care about the four other C's. What I cared about was character. And as Mr. Tafari said, the Eritrea community will, is determined on their own to pay back this loan, so that's really all we had to care about. So again, I thank my, my family, my Eritrean family, for being our neighbor. And I thank, and I thank, you, for, and I thank you for the opportunity to create community as Marlene just noted. Thank you so much. Okay. When you have leadership at the very top, and I'm talking about Washington, D.C., but you also have a friend that you can text anytime and they'll respond, that you can ask for assistance and they will respond. I'm talking about Lacey Clay. Because I call him Lacey. I don't get into all that William, whatever, whatever. It's Lacey Clay. And he always shows up. And so on behalf of his office, Congressman Clay's office, we have one of the most, what I consider to be one of the most community-minded representatives out of a congressman's office, and that is Lua Busi. Thank you. Thank you, Marlene, for those kind words. Again, to repeat what's been said today, uh, the 19th Ward is the best ward in the city of St. Louis. I personally judge that by how many ribbons I get to break here. <laughs> and that is a record. Uh, Red Sea Eritrean community, I want to thank you for having me here this morning. I, I like what I see, a lot of great people here. Uh, I met a lot of them. I don't know if I can pronounce your names or spell that, but Vince Shamel will show me that later on, how to do all of that. I, uh, as usual, when I get out to the community, I like to tell my story. Uh, uh, it, it seems very similar to what is going on here. Uh, 100 years ago, first of all, St. Louis is a very historic city. In my opinion, it is the most historic city in St. Louis. Where else can you be in the shadow of a beautiful church like this? As Vince says, the other tower on the back end, St. Louis U, church been there some 100 years. Uh, my family came to this country 100 years ago. We literally uh, uh, fought oppression from southern Lebanon to, uh, from the Ottomans to come. Uh, my, my grandpa wanted to bring uh, his family to a better life and give them, get, do better. And I uh, ended up in St. Louis, Missouri at the foot of Gratiot Street. And uh, they gradually progressed west. They made it all the way up to 9th Street, 9th and Hickory. So uh, it took them about 10 years. They made it nine blocks up the hill. Uh, our family and the other Arabic families started St. Raymond's Maronite Church. A lot of you are familiar with that, correct? So uh, uh, 60, 70 years later, it is what it is. The bishop resides from there. The bishop for the eastern, or western half of the United States of America resides off of uh, 12th Street. Who would ever think that? Uh, it's very historic making. Uh, it looks right now that, that you're about to start the same thing on the north side of St. Louis. You have a lot of new families here, starting a variety of businesses, a lot of diversity here. Uh, America's a great place. If you can make it in St. Louis, you can make it in America. If you can make it in America, you can make it anywhere. Our job is to help your businesses do better. I've had a uh, firsthand encounter here with my friend Alex that's already been mentioned. Uh, three gentlemen came from Ethiopia to start a business. They are now one of the largest cab and transportation providers in St. Louis, Missouri, and I think that's a great honor. I have personally got involved with them with taking our sick to their renal care, to taking our uh, old people, our elderly, to their uh, doctor's appointments every day, and I think it's a great success story. Thus, they have been mentioned on the cover of St. Louis Magazine. Thank you. Um, I wish you luck here. I want you to know on behalf of Congressman Lacey Clay, we are going to be a part of your community. We wish you well. You will do well in this country. The harder you work, the, uh, the luckier you get. Ty Cobb used to say that. So uh, my personal advice is along the line, you need to make friends. 
you need your Justine Peterson, you need your Minority Business Initiative here, Mr. Jar Drobnet. They are here to provide you services to help your businesses do better. Congressman Clay's office will be a part of this process. I want to wish you well. I'm sure there are some Arabic speaking people here, and with that, I want to tell you, inshallah, you all know what that means. God bless you, an American. God bless the Red Sea Airtarian. Thank you. Lou, you surprised me all the time with your talent. My goodness. So I am going to um, go a little bit off script because I have to. Now, first, I want to recognize someone else who uh, has a new position with the city of St. Louis. And Charles, you know, I am one of those people that I don't get involved with nonsense. And there's a lot of nonsense in the city of St. Louis some days. And so I stay above that. Because when you were director of the Department of Public Safety, you were professional. When I had issues to deal with, you handled those. And now you're the director of the Civil Rights Enforcement Agency. So it's most appropriate to talk and make sure that I recognize you today because we want to make sure that everyone has the right opportunities and they're protected. So thank you very much for being here. I appreciate that. And you know what, Charles? Your last name just came to my mind, Charles Bryson. Okay. I'm sorry about that. But I want to have a couple of testimonies on behalf of the community that's coming here that I am welcoming again to the 19th Ward. So Sister Paulette, can you just come up and just give us about a minute or so? You gonna bring uh, Sister Mark with you too? Come on. And, and you next, okay? Because you've been working with them a long time. I wanna say congratulations. Uh, as many of you know, I work at St. Pius the Fifth Church with immigrants and refugees on South Grand. And so South Grand is here welcoming you to the 19th Ward also. Um, I have known so many of you over the years, and Sister Marion Boberschmidt also has known you since you, came, since you came in the early 80s. And we saw this as a dream, as just a little seed, and, and have been with you through all these years, through weddings and funerals and celebrations, and we are just very, very happy and proud to be, uh, to be friends with you. Thank you. I have to say, I met the uh, Eritrean community when my hair was black. <laughs> so, 1980s, 1980s, Nini, Mabratu, and Lula came to a parish where I was working and said, we need a place to gather. Would you ask your priest? So we asked our pastor, and he said yes. So we used to enjoy the music, the dance, uh, the aroma, of the delicious food often. But I know that the community was looking for a place of your own. So this is a great day and I was honored to be invited. Thank you. It's such a pleasure for me to be here today. Um, I'm Anna Crossland, and I'm president of the International Institute. I know we resettled. Um, we sponsored uh, many of the people who are here today um, in the early 1980s, in fact, um, and more recently, the Kunama and other um, Eritreans as well. I know I've known some of you for a long time because some of you know me as Anna Peterson, and um, I was married in 1987, so it has been a long time since I changed my name. But my feelings about the community and about your and desire for your success have remained the same, regardless of whether I'm Peterson or Crossland, regardless of whether you come to the Institute for lots of services or only a little services anymore. We are so proud of what you have been able to do for yourselves in the community and take that next step to independence. And we see this cultural center as 
um, as, as a very big next step in that process because with this center you have said not only um, can, have you learned how to help yourselves but you're now in a position where you can help the, your own community and others um, uh, who are of African culture. So I want to say thank you to all of you for doing this, not just for yourselves, but for others in your community and other Africans. And to say that the Institute is here to help still, so that if you have questions or needs, etc., feel free to call on us. We want to help where we can. And congratulations to all of you. In welcoming you to the 19th Ward, you've already said that you want us to be very familiar with your culture. You're going to reach out to Clyde C. Miller High School students. You're going to reach out to the Grand Center Charter students. You're going to reach out and be a part of some of the programming that's done in other Grand Center art departments, whether it's a gallery exhibition or working with us on one of our uh, programs that we have and you have demonstrations of, of uh, food or clothing or whatever. So you're going to be a true part of the community. And you know, if we didn't know this one guy and he wasn't so great in being a part of this community and being so understanding and working with people, we wouldn't even be standing here talking today. So what I'm going to ask Dr. Douglas Petty to do who is also the pastor of the church right next door, right here, the white building, to come and tell his story on how he got started with this. And then we're gonna go over and break ground right over here in this little section here. And after we break the ground, he's gonna do the closing prayer. But give us two minutes here, and then we'll go over to break the ground. Thank you, Dr. Petty. Great setup. Um, well, good morning. good morning. Let me try that again. Good morning. I'm louder than all of you all. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, let me try that again. I'm one voice. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, now, now, now we got it. I am privileged to stand up here in front of, of everybody. Protocol. Let me just do that. Um, we actually owned this building and had a vision for what needed to happen in this community. One of the things was a community center. And it was as a result of hearing the conversation that allowed us to be able to say, we wanted to make sure that we were a part of, of the vision, uh, of the vision. And the reason for that is someone has to believe in somebody when nobody else believes in them. And because I understand that uh, it's, it's so significant that someone outside of yourself can grasp what you're saying that it changes lives and it's only because we have our own agenda so much so long so often that other things do not happen that should have been an amen right there I just, okay. let me let me prep, prep you for that and so with uh all the person davis and being in the area and my confidence in her as a person there literally hasn't been anything she's asked that I've not been open to doing, even like now when she said, okay, I'm gonna get him to come up here and do this, uh, being herself. Uh, but this is so much bigger than everybody here. It's, it's more than a community center. Uh, why don't we start calling it a movement, not a community center? So I need to help you to change your own language, not community center, but movement and someone has to start it. Someone has to help other people to understand, don't box me in. Give me room to be me. So I'm going to challenge you all, all of these declared partners, to press them for more than what they've done. Are you all hearing me? All right. What they've done is not enough. Come on, to talk to me. That's not, that's not enough. What they've done is not enough. All they've done is opened a door. And you can't be satisfied with that. That's not enough. That's not enough. Demand more. Because if they're really in your corner, they will call upon every other resource that they have and they will push it on your behalf. I, I better stop right here. Let me, let me stop right here. Oh, I got you. 
up. You, you do understand yes. what I mean. Thank okay. I don't mind taking the challenge. How about that? All right. Okay. As most people who know me very closely know that I only sleep about two to three hours a night. I don't require a lot of sleep. And I'm always up working on something for the next day. But we're going to start off this day before we break the ground here. And Mr. Tafari, I want you to ask your board members to come up. Okay, well, thank you again. And Reverend Pity, we will follow that. And I know this group has done a whole lot so far. And we won't doubt it that they're going to continue to do even more. Now, we are a 501c organization, nonprofit organization, so we have a structure, and I would be remiss if I do not introduce the board members of the Eritrean, Red Sea Eritrean community first. If all the board members please come on this side. Yes. Mr. Zigai yes. Kidane Alula, step forward please. Mr. Zigai Kidane is our president. <laughs> Mr. Haptap Masho is our secretary. We have Mr. Amine Debbas. He's a money man. He's our treasurer. And Mr. Mokonen Ogbe is a board director. Okay. This is the board members that have been working alongside with me. And I also like to introduce the housing committee that have been in and out with me between the board members and the housing committee. I am coordinating this whole thing, but they've done a lot of work. They spent three years of meetings, doing all kinds of things, and their job is not to stop here. Actually, they have, the fundraising effort falls on them. So I'd like for the community to meet who these players are. Let me start with the housing committee. Zegareta Waldu, please come forward. She is the chair of, the, of this committee. Nini Mabratu. Nini is the secretary of this committee. We have Hadish Kaleta. Hadish is the treasurer. And I am serving as the housing project coordinator. It's this group of people representing the entire community doing all the work. So I want to thank them for all their hard work and so forth. Thank you, thank you all the women, Dave. Now you can present. And so on behalf of the city of St. Louis and the opportunity that I had out of my budget, I would like to present to you uh, $225,000 towards the project. <laughs> Thank you very much. So now we'll move over for the groundbreaking. Thank you, Ms. Davis. This is a lot of money. And we appreciate <laughs> it. And we'll put it to good use. Thank you very much. You're and welcome. we thank the St. Louis.